you've got a design that you're interested in, in evaluating. Uh, you've got, we'll focus on just one task here, but in general you'll have a collection of tasks that you and your team have decided, you know, these really capture the heart of what we're trying to do in this system. So you've got a task, you've got a design, you're going to generate a scenario. And then, as we foreshadowed yesterday, what you're going to be doing is critiquing that scenario. So rather than having to ask yourself questions about the design as such, you're going to say, okay, the design generates this scenario. That's what we're going to be critiquing. So uh, you're going to be looking at each step, and you're going to be answering a set of key questions. We'll illustrate this in a, in a second. Uh, so at, as, a, as a person works through the scenario, they're going to be doing a sequence of things. And they're going to be doing them because they think they're trying to accomplish something by doing that. So one question is, do they know what they're trying to do? Okay. A system could be easy to use in the sense that all of the actions are simple enough to perform, but the actions are unmotivated. Somebody doesn't know that they should be doing a particular thing. So the first question is, uh, as they work through the scenario, are the actions motivated? Is, is there reason to believe that the user will have an appropriate goal? If they do have the appropriate goal, will the interface make it obvious to them how they have to accomplish that goal? Okay, it could be clear what they need to do at this point, but they can't figure out how to do it. And a, it's something that happens over and over again as a source of difficulty in interfaces is, the person knows what they're trying to do. Maybe there's a button label or something that, that really looks great for that, for that step. Unfortunately, there's another button that looks equally great. That's going to be a problem. Then finally, suppose the person, is, they're, they're on track, they're trying to do the right thing, they figure out how to do it, and then they do it and something happens that looks weird. It's not what they expect. They say, ooh, I thought I did the right thing, but obviously I didn't. I'd better back up and make another choice. Big, big trouble. So those are the key evaluative questions that you're going to ask yourself as you look through each step of the, uh, of, of the scenario. So again, what's happening at a high level here is we're evaluating the design by generating a scenario for a particular task and then critiquing that, uh, that scenario. So here's a real world example. Uh, this, this is the way the telephone on my desk still works. By now it's a pretty old system, but telephone equipment uh, never wears out. So this is, this is still what's happening uh, back home. So I've got, a, I've got a phone, and one of the capabilities it has is the ability to uh, uh, pass my calls on to a colleague if I'm expecting an important call, but I'm not on hand to take it, and I don't want it to go to voicemail. I could arrange to have, uh, for example, Peter Polson pick up that important call and uh, deal with it. So here's what I have to do to actually perform that operation. And the things with the little angle uh, symbols there are indicating audio responses that the phone makes when somebody uh, carries out the preceding action. So I pick up the phone, and I got a dial tone. But I'm what, what I'm supposed to do is to press uh, pound sign to, actually, as we go through this, it'll be helpful to, as a reminder here, have the, the information on that overlay that somebody might use to, to figure out what operation they should perform here. So I've got to perform that, uh, that uh, pound sign or number sign two operation. If I do that, I get a bip, bip, bip tone. Then I need to hang up. Then I need to pick up the phone. I get the dial tone again. Then I'm going to uh, press uh, star two, and I'm going to get another bip, bip, bip. And then I'm going to dial the indicated number there. I'm going to get another confirmation. Then I'm going to hang up. So before we dive into this in more detail, some of you may be uh, understandably a little bit baffled by what that pound sign two thing is doing up there. Uh, well, it, and you can see that the, the template tells us that pound sign two is CNCL. And maybe you can guess that that means cancel. So here's what we're going to do. So actually, the first thing is this, is, this is an important point. As a designer, what you're going to do is to lay out what you hope users are going to do. Okay? And then you're going to ask yourself, is it credible that they're going to do that thing that I hope? Okay? So 
You might ask, well, where does the scenario come from? Well, you're the designer. You generate the scenario based on what you had in mind in designing this. So if this is what you expect people to do, that's what you want to critique. Okay, because what you're trying to ask yourself is, will this actually work the way that I hope it will? Okay? So let's just stipulate that this is the way it's supposed to work. And now we're going to go through and we're going to ask ourselves the key questions here about each step. So how about that first one, picking up the phone? Will people understand that that's something that they need to do? What do you think? I hear a lot of yeses. I see a lot of nodding. I'll just note, and, and you may have had this experience. I think many of you will have. It used to be that a pick up the phone step like that was a complete no-brainer. Because the way phones used to be, they didn't do anything until you picked them up. But if you've noticed, a lot of phones don't work that any way anymore. There's lots of things you can do on the phone without having to pick it up. And in fact, I would venture that you can probably find a phone where you could perform this operation without picking up the handset. Because, you know, they've got buttons and displays and they've got all that kind of stuff. Phones are way more complicated than they used to be. But at least for this audience, this demographic here, you're okay with the notion that people realize, yeah, I've got to pick up the phone before this, this, uh, this happens. But you might register somewhere in your head maybe against the time that you're going to be doing user tests with this design down the road, you might be saying, well, let's watch that. Okay, and let's see whether we find people starting to press the keypad before they've picked up the handset. Could happen. But let's, let's pass over that one. Okay, then the phone responds with a dial tone. Uh, remember the question there is, when the system, when you take the right action, the system responds, do you feel good about what's going on? And I'm going to venture that probably everybody or nearly everybody in the room would say, yeah, dial tone, uh, yeah, that's what you expect phones to do. I'll just note, maybe some of you had the experience of using phones in another country. They have their own set of tones which are different from ours. And at least my experience is frequently the phone makes some noise and I have not the least idea whether that means, yep, you're on the right track or whether it means, hey, what are you trying to do, buddy? Okay, but again, let's pass over this. But if you were designing for an international audience, the stakes would be higher here. You could ask yourself, why is that tone going to mean anything? It's just a tone. But let's pass over it for now. Okay, uh, then we get to that press pound sign two. We've already, I've already uh, uh, really raised the point about that. I think we can all agree that nobody is born knowing that, well, of course, the first thing you have to do when you're transferring your car is, is to you know, make sure you've canceled what's in there before. Nobody's going to know that. So as I've already told you happened to me, that's a real gotcha. Okay? And, and notice, it's not that if I knew I had to cancel, it would be hard for me to figure out how to do it. I mean, maybe the abbreviation is a little cryptic, but probably I could figure that out. The problem here is it's an unmotivated step. I don't know that I need to do that. And so that's something that training or one of those other things that should be a matter of last resort is going to have to come in, uh, is, is, is to come in on. Again, there, there no doubt was some good reason why the system was designed to have that particular failure mode where failure to cancel led to a failed uh, transfer operation. I don't know what it was, but that's a, big, that's a big issue. I think we can all agree. Next, oh, then we've got the bip, bip, bip. Same kind of comment there. The bip, 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 which is used consistently in this, this interface, in the designer's mind, the bip, bip, bip is a confirmation. That means, yup, I got what you did. First time I heard it, it didn't mean anything to me. But, you know, I kind of got used to it. Again, we can register that. Gee, using these cryptic sounds, can we do better than that? And, you know, for this phone hardware, maybe not. For a phone with some kind of display capability, almost certainly, yes. You could do a better job in giving a person an idea of, of what was going on. Next step there, hang up. What do you think about that? Any comment? Totally unmotivated. Totally unmotivated, exactly. Now again, whoever designed this thing could probably explain, well, Clayton, you have to understand, the phone is connected to the 
the, the uh, private branch exchange or whatever it is, and the private branch exchange needs that hang up to terminate the such and such transaction. And my response is, I don't want to know. Okay? But more than that, I don't know. So I have, I have no way to know that I need to hang up at that point. Okay, pushing on, we've got the pick up the phone. We've already covered that thing. We get the confirmatory dial tone. Now look at the next step there. Press asterisk two. Forward is the word that des the design uses for what we're doing here, which is saying we want to forward and putting in the number to which we want the calls to go. There's a mo another mode of operation in which I could have preloaded a phone number, which might have been an administrative assistance number, and by using send all, I can transfer to the, the calls to that preloaded number without having to enter the number again. Okay? How is somebody supposed to understand that? And I can assure you, people don't. Uh, this is something we'll probably talk about a little bit more. It may have come up in some of the other presentations. There's something called the vocabulary problem that crops up here. And that is that in the, in the technical spaces we're dealing with here, it's a fond hope that by using appropriate, well-chosen words, you can signal the distinctions people have to, atten have to attend to. But the hope is vain in almost all courses, uh, cases. Language just doesn't work that way. There isn't a word that you can use that means, you know, enter a phone number for the things to go through, and a different word, make the, the numbers go there, but to an already pre-stored number. You can't do that with, with a word or a short kind of description, such as what fits on the uh, template. So there's, there's actually other issues here as well, but I think this illustrates the flavor of the cognitive walkthrough method. So again, you start with a scenario, you, you satisfy yourself, yep, this is my dream as a designer, this is what I want people to do, and then you go through and you ask yourself these questions. Is this really going to work out? 